Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the, uh, oh, well, today is another Warlock Wednesday. And uh, you almost forget every time. I like that almost. you're like, every single time we do one of these, you're like, oh, wait, I have to remember. That, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is the channel. <laughs> All right. Warlock Wednesday, and today and... we are talking about the uh, invocation bond of the talisman. Mm, yes, spooky evil sigil that you are bound to. I don't even a little bit get the flavor behind what this does, but what this does is really sweet, um, and I'm all about it. So this requires the Pact of the Talisman feature. This is a 12th level invocation uh, prerequisite. So you need a Pact of the Talisman, you need to be 12th level to get this. Uh, it's from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and it uses the Talisman, um, which is a Pact Boon that you get in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, that Pact Boon basically says while you're wearing the Talisman, um, your proficiency bonus number of times per day if you fail an ability check you can reroll or you can roll a dice a d6 i believe and add it to the check to possibly turning failures into successes the gist of it is it's like an ability score out of combat sort of helpful tool like a passing ground of guidance kind of more i'm not yet i'm just leaving it on yourself that's kind of boring but the invocations are really sweet and this is one such example because this invocation says when someone else is wearing your talisman which you would be able to use the d6 dice to increase their ability scores while it's on them you can use your action to teleport to an unoccupied space closest to them, provided you're on the same plane of existence. The wearer of your talisman can do the same thing using their action to teleport to you. And you can use the teleportation a number of times with your proficiency bonus uh, that come, all come back when you finish a long rest. So this, at 12th level, is giving you four uses of a plane-spanning two-person teleporter mechanic, depending on who's wearing your talisman at the time and you, which is sweet. I think that's such a cool, stupid, almost useless, but very fun gimmicky effect that's not going to be easy to make powerful, but is going to make some other powerful things a little bit better in some cool, fun ways. I love this invocation. Yeah. When, when we were saying at the beginning, you, know, you don't know the flavor of it. It bond of the talisman. So you've been eerie, spooky, idle talisman thing gifted from an otherworldly patron that just teleports you around. Well, it teleports you toward the talisman. But what does that have to do with the bond? Could it be like you are bonded gate with another person. The bond is between you and the person you give it to. Bob, I think I think we've worked up a bond. I don't know what that has to do at all with teleportation and how that has anything to do with. We don't. Uh, we don't have a bond of the talisman. <laughs> That's a good point. We don't. Uh, maybe we should get one. That seems sweet. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, so. Bees the hell out of flying to Pittsburgh. Definitely true. <laughs> what do you want to do with Bond of the Talisman? That's my question. All right. Uh, I think you meant uh, either we talked about this before or you wrote it. I don't remember, but uh, you had some interesting ideas. The, the main thing that comes into my head, or not main thing, but the first thing that comes into my head is, all right, I am going to a one-on-one -on -one meeting with this guy. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know if things are going to go south yeah. or not, or if we, we got a legitimate deal. Like uh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking Walter White going to meet Tuco, mm -hmm. right? Spooky and, come uh, alone kind of moments. Yeah, I got you. So things go south. Boom. I'm out of there. It's like, here, I was thinking, boom, and wait I'm there with you, right? Oh, Coming yeah. now. Yeah. Now you got an extra man there. Easy peasy. That's, that's another way you could do it. Yeah. That, yeah, that's probably a, cooler way My... i think getting out of dodge is often gonna be a good option with this it just takes your action which is really convenient <clears throat> um it doesn't like i mean that's kind of like as much as it can cost but like it's anywhere someone else is you'd be like i need to be there right now and you are um or alternatively fun. yeah you go in i'm unarmed but now my buddy's here with a you know a bunch of weapons yeah, that sounds sweet. I imagine, like, you had uh, set up something with, like, uh, a familiar and a wizard, and the wizard goes in, and the familiar's, like, just sitting back with you, just, like, give me the signal, and he's just telepathically communicating, come now, and bam, you're there. That seems super spicy, super sweet. Um, I really like this paired with other mobility options. I really like this with things like etherealness. I like this with things like Dimension Door, where normally, like, with Dimension Door, you only get to bring two people. Now you can kind of bring three and you can kind of upgrade all of the movement spells and movement options to now be like, oh, no, I'm totally coming with you. Like you, you can now have this little bit of extra like 
tag along anywhere you want to go kind of deal. So if you have really mobile parties that can pass this thing around, you can get all over the place in some really quite crazy, wacky ways. Is that good? Uh, yes. Being able to go, is, is being able to go, like, is one extra person on a Dimension Door making Dimension Door that much better? All right, not, not necessarily that. Oh, well, maybe. I mean, depends on the situation, maybe. but... uh. Yeah, it does definitely do. It definitely does that. But getting the whole party across the ravine, that's neat. I mean, it, it's one person. That's the that's no, the ultimate not when sticking... you're bringing it back and forth with your familiar. So, oh, that's okay. That's cute. So you you use this. <laughs> you spend the four uses of this to ferry your people across the <laughs> ravine at twelfth level. Yep, that seems. <laughs> I think being able to move it around with the familiar is definitely a really big uh, neat thing about it. The problem yeah, I mean, with that, I'm stuck at the bottom of a well. Oh, crap. Here, familiar. Go bring this to somebody. I don't geez. care. Anybody. <laughs> so either you've got a wizard with a familiar or you're getting a thematic initiate, though. And this is what one of the big problems, because warlocks don't initially, like, despite how much I claim warlocks always have familiars, they don't. You have to be packed of the tome or packed of the chain to get access to a familiar, because you don't have ritual casting to pick up the uh, ritual spell, find familiar, if you're not packed of the tome, and you don't get and packed of the chain just also gets it with empowered familiars. But packed of the blade and talisman have to get a feat to do that they have to get back to initiate now if you're taking bond of the talisman 100 percent, you've just convinced me that you should always be taking fine familiar off a of magic initiate a million percent because being able to move that talisman around with a fly speed mm. on a tiny creature seems really good um because then you can like you just said wherever you are you put yourself in neat positions then you're familiar just ferries around talismans to people who need them and you can be a sort of like this hub of transport where people can always jump back to you after doing risky things like you said with the walter white thing right <laughs> um it's overall really interesting i i really want to play with it i'm almost certain i'm gonna play with it and be like god this really does nothing but at the same time that nothing is really exciting this is like far step to me where you got really excited about far step the idea of mm. blinking around doing cool teleporty things i think this is gonna be almost exactly the same as like aesthetically and mechanically well i don't this think so. that, I'm, i was looking at far step in terms of like skirmishing this uh, here familiar bring this over <laughs> there like okay, that's not something to do in the heat of battle. That's fair because the action cost is pretty large. But yeah. I think in the out of combat context of the play pattern of running in and doing like a smash and grab, this feels similar in that way where it's they run and grab it and blink back to the warlock. The warlock hucks it out the window to grab onto the fighter. The fighter like yoinks the key off of someone else and teleports back to the warlock. Right? You're gonna get mm. these big could get these big coordinated heist moments where everyone's using the warlock like a beacon and the warlock's like, all right, familiar take it away and it flies to the top of the palace or whatever hands to somebody and then the familiar with all the junk just teleports up there. All of that sounds really fun to me. And all of that is definitely dependent on you having a familiar. Um, in any of those cases, you can do it with summon spells too, I guess. Um, I'm not convinced like there aren't other spells readily accessible to most of the people that just do that. This isn't cost you spell slots though. This is just a thing you get to do four plus times a long rest. That's pretty neat. Um, on an average adventuring day, is this ever going to be that good? I have a hunch. The answer is no. Um, but I'm definitely going to use it every single time I have an opportunity to, if I ever take this. So. There's, uh, all right. I was thinking, all right, if you don't have a familiar, you're stuck mm -hmm. at the bottom of the well. You uh, a hockey puck. You just what? <laughs> Tied to a hockey puck. Well, no? what I was thinking, uh, you, you attach it to a, uh, an arrow, you shoot mm -hmm. it up out of the well, and hope somebody picks it up. <laughs> you teleport to them. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. Uh, also, uh, this, is, this is probably getting more stupid, but uh, I know, love that. Find the you know, the mystery. You know who's the who's the secret thief who's been stealing all my stuff. <laughs> they steal your talisman. You still Boom, like an Apple right tag. <laughs> now I think uh, we have to talk, buddy. <laughs> I really <laughs> deeply love the idea. And that's going to be a great way to start an adventure, actually, is have your rogue come back and be like, hey, you found this neat little artifact along the ways. And then a warlock, like a 12th level warlock, just rise <laughs> to the first level party and be like, excuse me, sir, this is not yours. <laughs> 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 that's like a great time to me. I love that. I love abilities that have really big, nonsensical, wild, cool, whimsical effects. And this definitely is one of those. This is one of those ones where I'm like, God. I feel like this could do some really powerful things if I just racked my brain a little bit harder mm. and I keep doing it and nothing good comes out of it. I just hurt myself and <laughs> thinking too hard. Um, I, I thought you came up with plenty of good stuff. There was a... Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you had... I, 
I forget I where you mentioned it. Maybe it was in the written review, but you, you had uh, the the tall tower where you he keeps you know dropping it out the window, yeah. and get people to teleport back to him. Again, I just don't think that's a real problem. <laughs> people at twelfth level are having, right? <laughs> it's funny. It's not real. Like I think. Whenever I think this is probably similar to Ascendant Step, <clears throat> the Levitate at Will effect. There's definitely better ways to do what this is doing, but this is doing it in a really fun way. And it's doing it in a way that, like, this on its own is the reason, and what, frankly, the only reason I consider taking to Pack of the Talisman is just this effect is specifically so very fun. It may not be that good. It may not be, it, it'll probably have some niche little utilities would be like, oh, that was pretty effective in this one instance where we needed to have someone ethereal their way in, or ethereal their way in, and I teleported to them that were both there. And then we, I don't know, somehow teleported this uh, talisman back out to them and they teleported the third person in or whatever. And you get these little weird chains going. There's probably ways to do that. I don't know if they're that practical or that readily available, but it could be a little fun minigame to work out. This is probably a fun part of your big uh, upper tier heist plans. This is probably a big fun part of bamboozling and goozling some monsters in combat whenever you'd be like, oh crap, the storm giant's gonna cut me in half. I'm out of here. Um, that seems like a good place for this to be. I like it. I don't <laughs> think it's that good, but I like it a lot. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you got a rating then? I think this is probably a three. There's probably enough DC utility in this where it'll practically have a decent impact over a lot of long rests. It's probably worth the invocation slot, but just barely. You don't take this as, like, this isn't a core build around, like, you take this because you need it. This isn't Life Drinker. This isn't Agonizing Blast. This isn't Misty Visions. This isn't, uh, even, like, Phoenix Figure, I think it's better than this. This is something you're, like, I've taken the invocations that make my character playable. They're good. They're doing enough out of in, out of combat and in combat. I can take something whimsical and silly that I'm going to have a lot of fun with. This is, I think, where you start taking Bond of the Talisman. Yeah, three sounds about right. I, I want to give it higher, but uh, what what you know, the only exit for me is uh the twelfth level. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a god. This I want to be. Why can't this be available at the gate? It'd be so much fun to play with. Mm, mm. And it wouldn't uh, even be that the, good then because people don't have the teleporting and stuff, right? By the time you get up that level, I mean, at least somebody's in your party's probably got better ways or to do all the things we talked about. It definitely does. Again, it helps at that. It makes all the things that do the things it's doing, it makes all those things just marginally better. Dimension Door is marginally better because Bond of the Talisman could be on your Warlock. Uh, Fly is marginally better because uh, Bond of the Talisman is on your Warlock, right? You can have all these one or two person abilities now are all slightly better because your Warlock can come with you. Um, and that's pretty cute. I like that a lot. All right, uh, viewers, I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, we, we came up with some fun things. Wanna, how else have you used Bond of the Talisman? Let us know in the comments. All right. Um, that was Bond of the Talisman. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.